Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Eduardo Lima. I work for Igalia. Uh, it's a consultancy for North Spain, and I'm very glad that I was uh, invited to come here and talk to you about the wonderful things that we're doing, you know, um, related to JavaScript. Um, yeah, it's a bit about me. Uh, I was a, I'm a web developer. A few years ago, then I became a GNOME developer, but I kept doing things related to JavaScript and the web and in the server side. I have involvement in other projects as well. And as a disclaimer, I must say that I'm a GNOME shell, neither G GW introspection, GES, or hacker myself. I'm just a messenger. Uh, I want to bring a message from the GNOME community to all of you uh, and try to present you uh, the technologies we, we have been working on for the GNOME 3. Um, with, the, with two purposes. Um, one of them is to communicate uh, the great knowledge that we have been uh, working on very hard in the last three years, and second, try to uh, raise uh, rise inter interest in, in the um, wide JavaScript community about um, GNOME and developing applications using our wonderful stack of libraries. Um, yeah, um, let's start by asking the question, what is GNOME? Okay, GNOME, GNOME is a group of people. It's a, uh, a truly community-driven project. Uh, it, it has uh, 11 years already, uh, almost. Um, yeah, it's also a full-feature desktop environment. Uh, I'm gonna ask you how many of you have tried GNOME uh, or have seen it? Oh, cool, so it's, it, it will be easy. Uh, yeah, as so you can see in, in this slide, that's the GNOME 2 in the, those, and this GNOME 3. Maybe you can see a clear difference. Okay, it's, GNOME is also a collection of libraries and programs. You're not supposed to read all of, the, of that, and, and all of the free software. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, programs and libraries that has more than 10 years of evo uh, evolution. And they have been used in production for a uh, lot of time already. And yeah, in April this year, uh, GNOME 3 was released. It was the, a very important milestone for us. Um, there was a lot of people working for a lot of time on this. And um, the GNOME 3 included a, a major breakthrough uh, in, in several points, for example, in design, we just revamped everything. We created a new user experience. Uh, we now use the new hardware capabilities that we have in modern computers. And we, we really did a lot of work uh, cleaning up the stack. Uh, there was a lot of, the stack was very, um, was, was very full of things that we really didn't need or um, we could really remove from the stack and make a GNOME um, simpler. And yeah, also we introduced the GNOME shell uh, as a default user experience in GNOME for, the, for this version. Uh, the GNOME shell, maybe some of you have seen it already, was, is just a, um, a full desktop experience integrating compositing Okay, loader, or is it fine? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's uh, an application launching, switching. It allows multiple desktops and much more. In fact, uh, two years ago, I was uh, attending GSConf, and I had a very early version of the GNOME shell running in my laptop, and it really raised a lot of interest when I was uh, showing it uh, to the people informally, and uh, I realized that there was, a, there was a miscommunication from the GNOME community to what we were doing. Um, yeah, uh, you read there that this JavaScript is, is powering the GNOME shell. It's the glue that we are using to uh, access the low-level uh, C libraries of GNOME. Uh, and yeah, that's, you can see it's almost 30K lines of JavaScript against 
uh, also 40k of C. Um, yeah, I realized that we need to communicate uh, GNOME in other forums also because it's very attractive uh, platform right now for JavaScript developers um, after the, the technologies I'm going to be presenting today. So this is most, more or less the GNOME shell stack. Uh, we use OpenGL in the bar. We have this great technology, Clutter, um, and we have the old meta CD wrapped by Matter. We have the shell toolkit. We have also CSS for theming. Uh, we have this geology introspection layer that we're going to be explaining. And we have the JavaScript engine. And on top of it is GNOME Shell. Maybe I can, I can show you very quickly GNOME Shell, or maybe it's not needed. Raise your hand if you haven't uh, seen GNOME Shell running before. Only you? Or well, maybe later. <laughs> I can show you. So we're going to be focusing on these two technologies that really are the the technology that allow us to have um, access to the core libraries using JavaScript. Uh, so let's start with the uh, introspection. What is GNOME uh, GW introspection? Um, well, it's a set of tools that um, we have to extract the metadata of C libraries. It's, we extract the API uh, description in a, in a format that is very uh, easy to use in, in a runtime, not in the compile time. So we, we extract the API contract of, of a library, and we put it in a very well-known location on the hard drive for other programs to access it. Um, yeah, we, we need to realize that the, the, it's not as fully automatic because we need to uh, annotate the APIs. Uh, which we're going to explain what is it. It's a very simple process. And also, uh, we should de uh, design the, the C APIs in a way that they are uh, introspection friendly, meaning that um, there's no weird C tricks on it that make, will make it very um, alien for other languages to bind. Um, so uh, the goals of this uh, technology uh, are basically to enable us to use the C libraries in, in bindable languages like JavaScript, Lua, Perl, Python, etc. And there's also other uses like uh, API verification, and, uh, documentation, and yeah, this is the most important thing I think. The second one, which is shared binding infrastructure. Nowadays, if you have a library and you want to make it uh, introspectable. Uh, sorry, if you want to uh, make it uh, accessible in a scriptable language, you need to write a binding. And uh, it's that the same for every library that you write and want to use. You need to, uh, to create the bindings also. And it's a lot of work. And it's duplicated work because the bindings that you use for uh, accessing the C library in, in Python, it's al almost the same code that you need for JavaScript or for other languages. And what we're trying to achieve with the other introspection is to um, concentrate that, all that effort in just one library um, and make the, the binding work very simple. Um, oops, sorry about this. Uh, I, I will mention that this technology was initially created by a, start, by a startup called Little, that they uh, wanted to create a new user experience for the uh, vision of the device. And they hired uh, some of, of, the, of the very good GNOME hackers uh, from the GNOME community, and they started creating this technology. And as a result, uh, this technology was uh, contributed back to, to GNOME, and we were able to use them uh, for this new experience. Um, OK, this, this is kind of big. I will try to wait. Doesn't matter. Okay, sorry about that. Well, this is basically a big picture of what's going on here. The only bit missing is the, is the label that says runtime in the other side. So this is compile time. This is runtime. This is our library. Um, uh, during uh, build time, we have a normal compilation through GCC. Um, uh, we also have uh, 
this process, which uh, is, is uh, this script called GR scanner creates a key, an, an XML file. It's the an XML representation of the uh, library API, and then we have a process of compiling this XML to a binary file, and then uh, at the end we have these two these two inputs: a type li type lib file, uh, which is binary file, and the shared object, the normal shared object uh, of the library. And during the runtime, we have uh, G repository, which is the the um, uh, we're gonna see after, but it's um, a library that allows us during runtime to access uh, the symbols and the um, API description. And we also have this library called L L libffi, which stands for uh, foreign function interface. It's something very low level that we really don't want to be uh, discussing much. But it's the one that allows us to access a shared object uh, of a library during runtime without knowing the headers, basically. So we, ha we can know having some inf information on, about the API, having the me metadata, we can actually use the library with without having uh, compiler programs with the symbols of the library. Um, GJS is the uh, JavaScript engine that uh, we created. It's a wrapper to the spider monkey, um, spider, spider monkey engine, and it provides um, the access to the G repository. So GAS is the one that combines the metadata that we obtain from the um, introspection process and the shared object that we obtain during, uh, during compilation and uh, will allow us to use, uh, to make the automatic reflection during runtime, which is our purpose. And SpiderMonkey well, is the Mozilla engine we all know. Uh, so this is the same thing, but for, uh, for SID and, and the G JavaScript core engine. It's exactly the same, but I, I'm sorry about the, the pro, this problem. Uh, so what I wanted to point out with this chart was that only changing the, the engine and the wrapper, we got the same thing. So the, the work that we need to do to, to use this technology is, is very uh, limited to uh, what specific um, en JavaScript engine we, will, we plan to use. And yeah, this is what I explained before. The JIR file is an XML description of the library. This is an example. Um, maybe I can scroll a bit here. It's just an XML file with description of all uh, symbols, library functions, arguments, classes. Etc. In, in the case of classes, it's, I'm talking about the object, uh, which is the, the object um, system of, of GLib, um, in the library that where Gnome, uh, that Gnome uses to power um, um, oriented programming support in, in Gnome. So a tilelib is just a binary representation of the, this GIR file faster access. We don't really want in, at runtime to be parsing XMLs. We have a very uh, optimized representation of it and we use it in runtime. And this is the only purpose of the tidy file. Uh, so the JIR files and the tidy files are, sto are stored in a very well defined locations uh, so that the GAS engine could find them at runtime and load it dynamically when they are needed. Um, the G repository uh, well, is in, it's an API for retrieving library information from the tile lib during runtime. Uh, we, uh, GAS uh, extracts the symbols and use those symbols to access this thing, which it's, it's so, so low level that we really don't want to deal with it. It's like science fiction right now for, for in this context. But basically allows, us, allows GAS to access the introspection information from one side and be able to use to actually access the, the library uh, runtime using this library, which is uh, an, a very old library, it's part of, of Linux from a long time. So annotations, they go in line the code, normally in the form of, uh, in, in the C files. Um, 
they complement the API with information that uh, otherwise it wouldn't be possible to, access, to obtain only with the syntax. So it's semantic information that is not uh, uh, evident in the source code and only the programmer of the library uh, have access. For example, in the case of uh, when you have, when you created a, a block, you, you allocate a block of memory and you want, it, you want to uh, use it and then free it, but sometimes it's uh, the responsibility of the user of the library to free it and sometimes it's the library itself. But the, in the source code there's no, um, there's no uh, information about this explicitly and only the programmer of the library can know about that so uh, this is one of the cases where you have to annotate the code um, for example this is an ex uh, annotation it's just a block of a common block on top of the symbol in this case it's a, we're annotating a function and um, the annotation part is, uh, is marked between uh, parentheses for example in the case of file name Data, they allow none, means that you can pass null. If you, if you don't put allow none, you cannot pass null when you are in the, in the scriptable language. And also we have something interesting here. Oh, sorry. Uh, in the case of data, we annotate there that it's an, an array, uh, and we specify what other argument is this, the size of this array. So this information could not be obtained, obtained just from analyzing the syntax of the library. So we need to annotate that uh, to allow the, the bindable language to, to make the, the magic uh, and to make everything works as the library designer expect. Um, yeah, this is another example. In this case, we are annotating the return value. This is a glist, which is a link list uh, in glib. Um, but it doesn't store any information about the type. It's just a pointer uh, containing this glist. So we need to annotate that. Um, that's what the element type annotation is for. And in this case, we annotate, uh, we, we say that the element type of this glist is a clutter actor. It's just a, another symbol uh, of maybe another library, which, uh, which is not the case, but it could be. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, up to here, we discuss about the object introspection. It's, it's kind of uh, the foundation to be able to allow scriptable languages to access the power of the library, the C libraries that we have behind. And now we're going to talk about the engines and how they combine with this uh, GW introspection thing. We have two engines currently in the GNOME. Uh, Mm, in the GNOME uh, technologies, and one is GJS and the other one is C. GJS is uh, wrapping the Mozilla Spider Monkey, as we, as we saw before, while um, C is uh, JavaScript core. Um, Spider Monkey uh, supports some of the Harmony yes things, and it's, this is a, actually a problem right now because a lot of code, uh, the GNOME shell code is written using let and const everywhere. Um, taking advantage, advantage of the features that are available in the Spider Monkey engine already, but it, but the the C uh, project doesn't uh, the JavaScript core engine still doesn't support those. So we have right now have a problem on compatibility. We cannot run GNOME shell code in C only in GJS. And um, yeah, GJS is more mature right now. It powers GNOME shell at the moment. It's in production on millions of. Uh, uh, desktops right now, and they have some other minor differences, but bo both have a fairly good uh, support for GI. Um, and we have this thing that is very recent and it's very cool. There's a guy called Tim Castle working in this Node Jir, which is uh, GI support for Node, and it's in an early stage of development. And that's the, his reason for writing this instead of using the others and I kind of agree with what he says but I my advice to him would be first ask to get known developers uh, go to the community try, try to talk with with us and try to yeah be advised about how to to do this well because we have a lot of experience already 
uh, doing um, bindings for these engines. And we also he, he has some ideas like implementing the, of course, it's, it, it's meant to be running Node as another extension. And it will be the Node way of doing things. And we have some kind of a bit different vision of uh, for some of the APIs that are, don't really match exactly. And my advice to this guy, I haven't talked to him uh, already. I discovered this project very recently um, and included here. But um, I, I would say go and talk to the GNOME community uh, while you write this. And we are glad that you're writing this, actually. So how is writing JavaScript? Uh, in, uh, for GNOME, and I'm going to show you the demos first to g try to get you excited about it, and then I, w I will show you how could you, you start doing. So let me see. I was planning to to code the demo on the fly, but maybe, oops, what's that? I did something. Mm. It's not supposed to be there. Wait. Yeah. OK. Um, yeah, we can try to run a, to code a demo on the fly. Maybe I can. Oops. <laughs> okay, I have Emacs here. So I have to go there. <laughs> um, we're going to first import everything we need. For example, let's do a very basic GTK application uh, with a button and with a greeting message. So let's import GTK. Um, we are going to explain everything after the demo. Um, so right now, maybe you wonder about the, some syntax there, but just don't worry. Um, yeah, we're going to, we have GTK. We're going to instantiate a window. GTK, the window, say new, window. Um, GTK, window, type, top level. So we have the window. This is a constructor. GTK window is a constructor, and we are instantiating uh, it. We have a property name type. It's a property of the GTK window, and we pass all the properties in the constructor using a, an object. And then we we say show all show all. And then you, we need a main loop because Jellyb is is based on main loop, and there's a wrapper in GTK for a, G, a standard Jelly main loop, so we can just do this. OK, let's save it and try to run it. Let's get a console here. Oh, the console is small. I hope you can see. Maybe I can. Sorry, I make half. Uppercase window. Oh, yeah. Sorry. This should be uppercase. Oh, yeah. We need, we need this. We need to initialize everything. This is part of the GTK thing. So we have a GTK window running. Yes. 
but this is not all. We close the window. As you can see, the program keeps running. So that's not nice. So we are going to connect to the destroy uh, signal of this window to uh, kill the event loop. And we're going to do it this way, win. That's connect. Destroy. We're going to be putting a function here. OK. And we can say GTK main quit. Nice. So now we run it. Oops. Why here? Come here. Now when we close the window, we close also the program. And now let's add some button here. Mm, button is GTK button. Button. We need new because it's a constructor. Um, and we can pass label to it. Uh, hello. GSConf. Oh, some kind of. Yeah, I think it's right. Oops, no, 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 no. Okay. I think it's fine now. And we're going to add the, w the button to the window. Yeah. Let's try it. OK, now the window is very small because the button is small. Let's make it big. We have a GTK button here, which does nothing. And now if we connect to the BTN, the signal, click it. We can get, we can print some message to the user, like hello back, for example. And OK. That's very simple. So it's a very stupid demo to show the most basic things that we can do. And I'm going to show you another demo, which is more complex. I'm going to, I have it already written. I'm going to just run it for you and hope you like it. It's here, it's GAS demo one, I think, yeah. This is a webcam. This is running GStreamer and Clutter. Um, it's hardware accelerated, of course, because of its clutter. And it's using GStreamer for capturing. Uh, it, it looks kind of crappy because I just put a, a, a cam source and, and a sync in the texture, but I, I didn't put the other elements of the pipeline that, for example, a color space. We need to get this right, but I just wanted to show uh, some cool things. But the thing is that we're going to check the code, and we're going to see it's 40 lines of code only in JavaScript. Um, let's wait. It's demo one. Yeah. So it's kind of the same. We have GStreamer, which is this line, Clutter. We have Clutter GStreamer, and we have a main loop. We call GST init to initialize GStreamer. We initialize Clutter. We create a black color for the, for the background. We create a stage with the size. This is normal uh, construction. Uh, we set the color of the stage. We connect to the destroy signal of the stage to close the program. Um, we create a clutter texture. We add it to the stage. And we set the size of the texture here. 
Then we create a streamer pipeline. We create a plugin for the cam, the webcam capturing. Uh, we add it to the pipeline. We create a sync uh, element. Um, yeah, we create a video sync element. And this is where the clutter just streamer thing goes uh, mixed. And we add it to the pipeline, and then we, we, we link the source, which is the cam, uh, webcam source, with the sync, which is a clutter texture. So at this point, we, we created the, uh, the, the pipeline, we, we linked it, and this is for the rotation effect. We created the vertex, uh, we, we specified the center of the rotation. All those are properties of, the, of normal G objects that we have. We normally use this in C, but here, as you can see, the, the syntax is very similar. And now we do, uh, we, we have a main loop uh, loop with a timeout of 25 seconds, and we just modify the angle, the X angle and the Z angle. And at, at the end, we just show all the, the elements of the stage. We set the pipeline to playing, and we run the main loop. And it's, oh, well, it's 52, sorry. Uh, so that's it. We, we can uh, do a fancy, just streamer clutter thing, only with 40, 52 lines of JavaScript code. And there's so much more behind to, to be used. Uh, this is only one example of two very popular libraries that we have in Evinom Stack. Uh, but there are a lot, of, a lot more cool things. So let's continue. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a special, uh, let's say, ex um, a native JavaScript module that is uh, built inside uh, JES, which is a wrapper to the main loop for uh, convenience uh, use. Here we created a main loop, a JLib main loop, using uh, a main as ID. So we can have several main loops running and we can refer to them using this ID. So it's something that is very, speci very specific to GIS. They implemented that way for convenience, basically. But we could have uh, used a normal JLib main loop here, and it would work the same. Uh, OK, I think we could continue with this. Ah, maybe I, can, I have time for another cool demo, which involves the web also. And I think it's also kind of cool. Wait. We have to go. Yes. Mm. Let me check something. OK. Uh, OK. GIS. We're going to run the demo. OK. Now we're going to open a browser. Um, we already have one. Another Chromium instance. Oof. OK. It's Nina, it's localhost. OK. We get this image. Oops. This is a demo of technology. It's a, it's a C library that is introspected and do kind of a mix of Node.js and socket IO. So we're going to show also, let's open another browser, let's say Epiphany which is the, oops, Epiphany doesn't want to run here. I don't know why. Let's open Ice Whistle, which is Firefox in Debian. And <coughs> let's do this. Bring it here somewhere. Move it like this. And we can. <laughs> We also work in Opera, actually. So let's put Opera in the game. Uh, yeah, Opera is here. 
Wait, let's bring it here. I don't have room for it, but maybe. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. OK. So now we have. This is using WebSocket, fall back to long polling. Um, it's a full 100% JavaScript, server side and, and browser side, of course. And yeah, it's kind of the cool things we can do now that we have a lot of libraries to access, a lot of um, hardcore um, things in the server side to use out of the box, just by using this technology. OK, enough with the demos. I hope you enjoyed them. Let's see what is this about. Okay. So, uh, importing modules is a bit different of what the common GS uh, project has already spread around all the JavaScript developers. There's no required uh, thing. Uh, the imports uh, operation is an assignment, not a function call. And this is actually uh, not nice because you you can you cannot do a lot of things that you can do with a function call like for example implementing the asynchronous uh, loading using the the, the, func the required function as an object for all things and we have an important I think it's very limited we also this is the the most serious problem we have the full modules global scope is important so you know if you use common yes or no yes you have the exports object and you add API to it, and that's the only object that gets exported. Well, here, everything goes uh, exported. If you have private symbols, they will be exported as well. So uh, the this variable inside the, your module will be exported completely. And I think that's, that's a problem, and we need to, to improve that. Uh, that's also a search path similar to required paths, and this only synchronous, of course, is an assignment. Uh, this is an example of importing a normal JavaScript module. You specify the, the path to the module using dots instead of slashes. Um, this, the three examples. Here we use const, which only works in GIS, and this is the nice way to do it because uh, module importation should be immutable. And we can get that with const. Uh, this is uh, importing a GI module, which is an introspective library that we have in the repository, in the G repository. And we use the GI uh, member of imports, which is a, um, we can say it's a keyword, right? It's part of, it's a mutable. Um, uh, we, we using GI, we have uh, implicit access to the G repository using the namespace. When you compile your library with introspection support, you have to specify a namespace for your library. And in this case, glib is glib, like this. Uh, GTK is GTK, like that. Um, it's up to the, the library developer to create the namespace to be used for the G repository. Um, yeah. Do you want it to ask us? Yes, it's not really about the well, minus Yeah, it's a weird construct, but it works that way. In, in the newer versions of uh, DES, I think this you can you can put uh, equal equal. You can assign uh, to imports GIGTK, You assign a three dot zero. But it does not work in this version of the JS that, ha that I have running. Yeah, but it's, it, that's not uh, that works that way. Hmm? Yeah. 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 For me too. So Uh, I think it was uh, it, it's already a deprecated uh, way of doing it. Um, I don't, I'm not aware of the decisions that 
the left to that, but uh, this is the new way of doing it. Um, but I, I cannot tell you right now why it was like that. I could um, try to find it and tell you after. If you want. Um, it's like, I think it will be like a, a, a symbol as a whole, everything. Um, yeah. So there's also the native uh, modules that, that I was talking before, like a main loop, uh, you have dbus, a uh, wrapper to make it more convenient to use on JavaScript and the JS. Uh, 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 you have a lang with some language uh, utilities and the signals uh, module also. Mm, yeah. Uh, this, this will be important in native GS mode. They are always accessible from the root importer. So, using the GI APIs, how to map the symbols that we have and we know in the C library that are very well documented to the new bindable language. We have a set of well-defined rules and they are not actually in 100% of the cases well-defined, but there's uh, with practice and while the documentation for binding language is not in place, we can kind of learn how to map the, the symbols to the C symbols to JavaScript in this case, um, and it will, it will always work for most of the cases uh, using the, some simple rules. For example, functions. Functions. If you have a normal function, you will uh, use the namespace dot the name of the function like this. For example, g time, timeout add becomes glib timeout add. Um, it's kind of um, normal. You, you only need to identify what is the namespace of that library. In this case, it's g. It's the, it, the, the C namespace of, uh, in, in glib. And you replace that with the, with the namespace in the g repository, which is glib. And you have glib timeout. It's kind of a trick, uh, a rule to, to guess it. Um, yeah, in the case of G-object methods, they, uh, they are used like this. You have to map the namespace, the class, and then the method. So let's say we have GTK button new with label. It becomes GTK dot button using a camel, and then new with label. So it's kind of a very simple rule. And uh, in the case of enums, uh, it's kind of simple also. You use the namespace, then the middle part of the symbol, and then the, the last part in, in um, uppercase. The properties of objects are in, in, in C and in G object in this case, we can use dash for, for the uh, properties because they are strings and we, we need to replace them for underscore to be able to use them as normal object members in JavaScript. Um, the signals, as we saw in the demo, you use the connect thing, and in C it is different. They, they have this signal object with uh, members, where the, the signal names are the members of that object, and they all of them have a connect uh, method. You pass the callback, and that's it. And I, I forgot about uh, about I, I forgot about constructor. What we saw in the demo we, for for constructing a G object, you use new, the namespace, the class the class name, uh, in camel case, and then you pass a object as as the only argument, an object with all the properties that you want to define, uh, when uh, to pass the constructor. Okay, so. What about documentation? Uh, right now, documentation uh, is poor, actually, for the binding languages. There's no official documentation. We have an official documentation there, and it's kind of nice. But let's remember that also we, we could have some lags in the actual C library documentation. So um, it's like a complex thing to do. And this is very recent. We have been very busy build, build, bringing this technology up today that, of course, we are lacking a bit for the developer story for bindable, bindable languages. So we need to work uh, on that. And in fact, it's a hot topic right now. Last month in the 
uh, desktop summit, we have a GI Hackfest, and it was the focus of the Hackfest was basically documentation for binding language, Python, JavaScript. So the, we are really concerned about this, and we want to fix it as soon as possible. Uh, development tools, we don't have them yet. It's too early for us. Uh, we don't know what, we have a lot of discussions inside the community yet, uh, and still, whether we're gonna use uh, Python, JavaScript, DS, C. Uh, we are not sure about the developer story yet. We haven't figured out all the details, but I, I think there's a lot of interest in having very good development tools. Um, and we, if we want this to succeed and attract developers' attention, we'll need to, to fix this also. Uh, okay, this is very important. How to synchronize our um, community with the rest of the world, basically. This is a very delicate issue because um, there are some people in favor of it. There's other people that are not very interested. Uh, try to gather some uh, opinions uh, from the, the core developers of these technologies. And, uh, well, the basic idea, or the basic message would be that it, makes se it could make sense for some of the common GS libraries, but maybe not for all of them. Because, for example, we have the GIO uh, library, which is part of GLib, and it's the, the library we use for input output. And we have specific ways to do asynchronous uh, operations. We have specific ways of doing things that integrate well with the rest of the GNOME libraries. And we, we really don't want to mix, develop, uh, to mix code uh, co from common GS APIs, for example, for the HTTP, maybe, I don't know. Uh, we really want to use the GIO way because the Python developers will use that and the Lua developers, the Vala developers will also use that. And we really want to make, make a consistent message to the developers on how the APIs should be used in bindable languages. So for some APIs, it could make sense to synchronize with them. For example, I, I really want to push for the modules because it's a basic thing. And I think we could improve a lot of the situation if we have some um, module importing using modules 1.1 at least. Um, there's a lot of, well, we need to discuss a lot and try to bridge the two communities and discuss what makes sense, what makes not sense. Um, that's the Node.js project which will, in a way, bridge the two uh, APIs because we are going to be using library, GNOME libraries in. Uh, in no context, um, the, this guy is really in, I was reading the, the, what he wrote about what uh, style to use and he really wants to implement the, uh, what makes sense for in the common GS context. Uh, so he wants to adapt even the syntax to, to common GS, uh, to the, what is familiar to node at least. And, this GJS, common GS, is a very new project I just created as an experiment. It's a wrapper to GIS to provide common GS APIs. Um, my purpose with this is not to, to create a, another wrapper on top of GIS to have common GS, but trying to convince people and try to move, at least uh, create some debate uh, and maybe if the experiment is a success, meaning that some people do use uh, this wrapper instead of the actual GAS, maybe uh, we can convince people that to merge these APIs or the APIs that make sense inside GAS itself. So it's not the way to go in the long term. I don't want to push this. It's just part of an experiment, and it's very new. I, I started writing it like a month ago, and it it does modules 1.1 one one and promises the um, conditionally compliant. At the moment, it's there and you can check it out. Uh, it's kind of very super pre-alpha thing, but anyway. So what current issues we have? Uh, we have a lot of challenges, like for example, the, 
documentation thing I was talking about, and we still don't have complete support in all the GNOME libraries. Maybe in the core libraries, yes, but we have a lot of other libraries that still need to be introspected. Oh, sorry. Um, um, we need to uh, complete the support in GES, official documentation, uh, solve the differences between GES and SEED, and try to align with those. Uh, some final thoughts, we have a very nice tag. Um, it's a very uh, nice combination of low level and high level. Um, we are basing our uh, code in the platform that has a lot of years of evolution and will give us uh, robustness and confident, confidence. And it's very convenient for fast uh, prototyping. I think I, I use it a lot. Uh, it's something quick in JavaScript to, to try some, some nati native code uh, API. And of course, it brings JavaScript to the desktop. Um, this is an awesome, awesome stack. We have the libraries, the GNOME libraries. Uh, this is only the core GNOME libraries and GNOME 3 stack. We have introspection, and we could have a lot of engines, and then our problems running on top. And I think it's very awesome and very interesting uh, platform to develop upon. And that's it. Sorry for taking more time.